Hi, welcome to another mind training session. As we keep looking at the mind, watching it, learning about it, learning about how it works, distinguishing its habits and patterns, and therefore gaining power, the power of knowledge. Sit up straight, close your eyes, have a big breath in and a deep sigh. Get a sense of how you're feeling right now. Do you feel relaxed and quiet? Get a feeling for your resting breath that steady rhythm. And even if it doesn't feel very relaxed and calm, even if you don't feel very relaxed and calm, just relax into and around the feeling of a restful breath. When we do stop and take time to meditate, we are resting the body allowing it to recover from the intensity and speed of the way we're moving around and using it. Now we are listening to it. We're checking in with it. Becoming more aware of its subtle expressions, feelings and sensations. energy levels which really affect our moods and thoughts. Becoming more in tune with ourselves, our way of being. Now, Let's dedicate this practice to other people in the world. Think now of people in your life that you care about and want the best for them. Dedicate this practice now so that you may grow and open and become wiser, kinder, more aware more healthy, for the benefit of others. We are doing this work now, not just for ourselves, but to be of service to everyone in the world that we interact with.
have a deep breath. Open your eyes, come back to the space. been really looking at anxiety. We're noticing how it's there all the time in the background of our thoughts, our thinking, our worrying, our preoccupations. And we're looking to create calmness in the face of that. Not worrying about it too much. That's not a smart response. We're looking to be understanding, compassionate actually. When we realize what it's like to have a mind that's really worried all the time, well, we can remember that this is what it's like pretty much for everyone in the world. We know how difficult it is for ourselves to manage a mind that is worrying, deeply anxious, insecure, concerned and stressed, well, we can appreciate that lots of other people are struggling with the same thing. But not everyone has these tools, this type of support, this practice which is designed to address these problems and to create freedom complete freedom and happiness. So we're really lucky to have this opportunity and not everyone else does. It's worth remembering. Okay, so we've been looking at the eight worldly concerns. The first two, desire for happiness and fear of suffering. Three and four, desire for importance and respect and attention and for fear of insignificance, fear of not being valued or even noticed. And we start to see how these are affecting us throughout the day and night. Okay, now we look at five and six of these worldly concerns. Desire for praise and fear of criticism. We really love it when people acknowledge that we've done something good, that we are good at something and that it's recognized it makes us feel good to be good at things, but a lot of that good feeling is based on the approval of others. It's another validation of ourselves as important, admired, needed. Conversely, criticism. This is one of the most brutal and violent damaging areas for our psyche. Most of us really struggle with criticism because we take it so deeply into our sense of self-worth. If we feel that we have not been approved of, if we have done something wrong, we take this very hard and very often we get angry, we feel hurt, often we want to fight back straight away, put up a wall, defend ourselves, and that creates more problems and more separation. So desire for praise, where so many of our activities and even things that we say are designed about getting approval, 
and this gives us confidence and then fear of judgment, negative judgment, criticism. This can take our confidence away completely. So these two areas leave us very vulnerable. Now, the source of these concerns is something that you should start to be seeing now in these eight worldly concerns. The notion of I, me, this very delicate sense of self that we are worried about all the time. We're trying to impose ourselves and justify ourselves. We want security and acknowledgement. We don't want to be criticized. Who is this person, this I, this me? We need to start looking at this. In Buddhist teachings, we have the notion of self-cherishing. This is a very important area to start looking at. This I, this me, this preoccupation with me and my needs. I, I am important. I did the right thing. I don't want to be judged or criticized. I want to be praised, etc. This is where all the struggle comes from. So really, we need to break down this self-cherishing obsession. We need to see that it's based on a fallacy. Close your eyes. Have a deep sigh. Right now, get a sense of the I the me within you, within your body and mind. This person is so important to us. We're so consumed with protecting it, strengthening it, asserting it if need be. And yet it is so vulnerable just one little word of criticism, we can just break down. So, this preoccupation, in fact, it's an obsession. Preoccupation with my private personality. Do you have that? this person, this I, me person. You say that you have a body, you say that you have a mind. So where's this you person or this I? Try it right now, say to yourself, my body, my mind. Now, who is that person who owns that body and mind? Yogic practice, Buddhist training, is designed to show you that this me person, this I, is a complete fabrication of the mind. It does not exist anywhere. It cannot be found anywhere. This whole story of me, my life, my history, 
my pains, my suffering, my achievements. It's a total preoccupation, a huge amount of energy and emotion poured into this area needlessly. For my whole life, I have been wasting so much time desperately obsessed with me. And it's not even real. This I person you cannot find. You cannot show me this person. It's just a story in the mind completely made up. Right now, how are you feeling? How are you responding to these ideas? Are you stuck inside a cage of your own mind? your whole life a constant struggle with something that's not even real? Aren't you interested to see if it's true and whether it's worthwhile to keep struggling like that? Is there another way? Is there something beyond this? Feel your breathing now. Is it tight? Has it become faster? Is it spacious and relaxed? Come back to the idea of calm abiding being completely relaxed right now, not worried about anything. No idea is worrying to you. Completely relaxed in this moment. come back to the space. Look at the space, be aware of it, feel it, place yourself in the space. And have a
have a deep breath. So, this is a stronger, more confronting idea. This is the real meat of meditation practice. This is the mind training we're going to continue to work on and open up even more. We're going to see if we can find space, freedom from this constant preoccupation with my own private problems, this private person who I spend my whole life trying to secure. That's called suffering. That is a permanent, constant state of suffering because it is always anxious. It's pure anxiety. Imagine if we could be free of that. We can. That's what this whole practice is about. So, over the next day or so, just keep looking at this little me person, this little story you've got, who really loves praise, approval, acceptance and validation, and who really doesn't like criticism, who feels really hurt. Feel how strong that self-cherishing is, especially on the negative side, when you feel hurt. That's usually when it's the strongest. And then ask yourself, is this person even real, or is it a made-up story of my own mind? total fabrication. See how you go with that? Okay. Thank you very much. Take care.